and welcome to this week's look at action and stunts on film and television. How are you? Yes, I know it's Wednesday, I know, but last week was my birthday. Uh, thank you to everybody who uh, took time to uh, pass on your wishes or condolences, depending on how you look at it. Um, and uh, that was lovely, so thank you very much for all of you. And of course, the podcast is based around the fact that uh, I became 52. So I thought I will look at a movie that is the same age as me, and uh, there's quite a few to choose from, but one that I was particularly keen on um, that I'd said for a while I wanted to have a look at and hadn't got round to doing so was The Mechanic, the original Mechanic with Charles Bronson. Um, anybody from a motoring basis who gets excited by this I wouldn't really. Uh, it's you know he's uh, this type of mechanic isn't the sort that's going to overcharge you for spark plugs. Uh, this one most definitely. If he gets charged, then he's going to finish the job properly, and you're not going to see an invoice for it. Um, this is the original one. There was a remake, of course, or a reboot. Can't decide what it was. Jason Statham uh, took over the lead role that uh, um, Bronson was involved in. Um, uh, Bronson's sidekick on this occasion is uh, a young actor in this respect. Jan Michael Vincent, of course, later went on to big things. Uh, he was uh, the kid in Hooper and uh, later on became your man from Airwolf. Um, uh, and his acting range hadn't changed a great deal from this movie to airwolf he says very little he waves his hair about from time to time and gets the job done um and he's a bit menacing and a bit sinister in this picture um and if you haven't seen it then you should uh, you should see it it's well worth uh, a look and um the only drawback of course is it's directed by michael winner who as you know i think is a complete lunatic from start to finish um uh, and enough said about him, the better. But um, what is exciting about this is that the stunt coordinator on the picture is a wonderful individual called Alan Gibbs. Alan Gibbs, you will know um, if you're familiar with some of the bits we've done in the past. He performed, doubled for Burt Reynolds doing that Trans Am leap in Smokey and the Bandit. And, uh, of course, also uh, uh, doubled Jack Nicholson and was the coordinator with Jack Nicholson uh, on The Witches of Eastwick. There's a most extraordinary sequence hanging out the back of a car in that movie, and he does all of that as well. So there's some remarkable bits and pieces. He's very ingenious about knowing what he wants, knowing what the director wants, and knowing how he can get it done safely. And there's a moment in this which we will have a look at, which is breathtakingly complicated from 1972 and how they go about it nowadays it's common thing and they do it all the time but back then it was very very different a few little bits and pieces a um, couple of individuals to point out to you along the way so we'll regroup after this and have a shifty at the mechanic so there he is the man of the case it is charlie brunson and the mechanic little bit of judo testing here. Greg Anderson, a guy, a stunt guy brought in. Thrown to the floor. Thrown roughly to the floor, Centurion. This is the bike chase. This is how it starts. With a van, a delivery van, being waved down to the side of the road. They're going to commandeer this. And the driver of said van is Ernie Orsati. Famous face. The Orsati family, of course, very big in the in the business. And, uh, well, he's not long for this world, clearly. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Charlie doing his thing. Right, they get to the house. The security guy who is checking the CCTV is Alan Gibbs, who's the stunt coordinator. And uh, he says, yeah, OK, delivery guy, come on in. They open the gates. In the back of the van is a motorbike, and that will play a part in the upcoming chase. The guy gets there. He says, well, hang on, I'll come down. Alan then goes to the front. Charlie jumps out, gets himself into a position. Charlie Bronson, it has been said, and I wasn't aware of this, but doesn't pull his punches very often. In fact, there's a great many stunt professionals the world over who've been properly hit by Charlie, and Alan is one of them here, uh, as you will see. 
Charlie dives out from the bushes and he comes round with a backhander and clocks him for real. And <laughs> down he goes. And, you know, when Charlie's in character, Charlie's in character. So uh, Alan just sort of lies there and says, all right, I'll take it on this occasion. Whether he got his own back, I don't know. It wasn't terribly clear. They then search the house to see if they can find the guy they're looking for. And around the corner, this is Charlie, and he turns around the corner and is confronted by Frank Orsati, the other brother, um, who then dives at him. We have that. And Charlie clearly clonks him on the way down. Oh, behind the door is Jimmy Roberts. Now, he's playing the character, but he is also a stuntman. He's going to be doing the motorcycling here. Um, and he rushes up to the bike, gets on it, and starts to hoitle off in that direction, hence the start of the chase. Um, Jimmy's on one, Alan's on the other, and they chase across the countryside. It, you don't get, I don't suppose, it's quite a long sequence, actually. I've cut it down, but it is quite a long sequence, and very rarely do you see two bikes like this. I mean, it's a, you can see where they've, they've gone before. It's a trail path, um, and there's a great deal of work gone into static shots and then panning across and catching them. Um, and I think that if n nowadays this had been shot, you would get cuts to the driver, to the, the, the rider of the bike, and then back. They would have maybe an open visor so you could see the actor, or it would be created. Uh, this is a nice little job. Over the roof, down onto the car, and away. And then it happens again with... Uh, he's thinking, Burke, I'm just trying to clean that. What are you doing? And then Charlie comes down and does it as well. <laughs> you swine. And he's off. Like a startled cat. Right through here, through the party. There's always a pool knocking around. Because when in doubt, you want to knock somebody into it. Um, so they've gone through this. They've worked out a routine to get around here. And then coming down this side, you boys are going in the pool. And that's where they end up. Now to try and get away, he's going uphill again. Little moment here, it's all timing, comes across the road, just in front of the car. The car slides across. The, there, that second car slides across and then gets one up the backside. Whack. That's nice. Chase continues. It's not long now. They're going downhill. Little jump there, trying to land on the back wheel if possible. That looked like two separate cuts. And this is where the magic happens here, because the speed is continuing. They're going downhill. He needs to get to a certain point, and Alan has worked this out to the last detail. That bike needs to be going straight as it leaves the cliff top. Down we go. We start to go down. Um, they then pop some additional shots in with sort of uh, undulating ter uh, terrain. And he skips along, both shots in frame, both jumping that one there, coming down the other side, gets past there. Then the bike goes down here, and then it sails off the edge of the cliff. Now, in order to do this, Alan had decided he was going to ride the bike himself with a dummy at the front. As you'll see here, he's got to come right the way down. There's the ramp at the very bottom. He then is, there's a jerk harness, a ratchet pulls it look at the height he's got as that bike leaves the end of the ramp and then it sails over to the edge of the cliff it's remarkable nowadays they do it all the time but back then and that would have been a hell of a landing for him as well a little later on this is the last piece of action they are getting away from doing the job that they've had to do and they are being chased then by some vehicles this is a very famous piece of road um you see this quite often in movies from that period. The windy road, the camera shots down low, attached to the side of the camera with the chase car there, the camera car, so you can see everything. Uh, it is um, Jan Michael Vincent and Bronson in the car. That's made clear uh, on a number of occasions when the, you come through and there's very clearly shots of, of the pair of them in the car, like that one there. Um, they decide that... This guy's getting a bit too close for comfort. So they've got some explosives with them left over from the job, which was handy. And they're going to drop them out of the window. Now, I wouldn't be at all surprised. 
I don't want to talk too much about him, but I wouldn't be at all surprised that if Michael Winner wanted this done for real, he would have wanted somebody in the car when the explosives went off. So what Alan's done is he's rigged the car with the dummies in it to then be pushed along. The first explosion goes off, um, and that will then be coming along down the road. It might be a fixed steering wheel. It's going to a certain point and the explosion goes off. Not in a million years you're going to have somebody in that or certainly not in a situation where it's going to be the length of time that this shot is taking to go through. Um, you know, you'd want the stunt guy out if there was somebody in it. So that's never going to happen. Later down the line, they come up against their last situation, which is an ambush. They put two final explosives in the vehicle. Fear to doing very well out of this movie. And uh, there's some gunshots being fired off. This comes down to its destination and goes off. Nice big explosion there. Alan Gibbs gets himself set on fire. Always an option for a fire gag. Down the bank he goes. Couple of uh, snipers to take care of. Frank Orsati is one of them. And then they knock off a few of the other guys as we get towards the final section. They are... They're just shotguns here. I've never understood how many... I don't know about guns particularly, but I don't know how many shells a shotgun can hold at any one time. Um, I've not seen anybody reload so far. So we're working on Hollywood magic, presumably. Um, that's going to be very warm as they go past that. There's a guy in the bushes. He's the last guy. They're trying to pick him off again. Oh, now he's run out and he gets in the car. He's run out as well and picks out the gun. The pistol... Presumably it's Charlie shouting, get in the car, let's go, let's go. And off they go. Now the guy here thinks, right, I'm going to get after you boys. But in a movie like this, you know, you never really get away from anything. And round the corner, when he gets to his destination, he is confronted with a digger. And that digger then chucks him right over the edge of the cliff. Always reminds me of the Italian job when you see cars going down cliffs like this explosive staying on it the whole way down and coming to a rest uh, there's something quite cathartic i know it's you know it's a not very nice situation there's clearly nobody in it but nevertheless it's always great fun to watch there it is that's the mechanic from 1972 um do i feel any older no not particularly physically i'm a wreck obviously uh but uh, the rest of me is uh, is still 21 and thinks it can do everything um that's the beauty of age um there's also lots of changes in life which have taken place which at the time although seem complicated they do actually work out in the long run there's a great saying uh, that says it is better to have walked through the wrong door than to spend the rest of your life in the wrong room a lot of sense in that uh, and uh, I think well, with age comes experience and uh, you pick up a few bits and pieces along the way so uh, I would uh, anybody who's uh, coming to terms with coming up to a, a birthday a milestone birthday and by that I mean 40 onwards the rest are just you know token token birth although when i became 25 um i uh, somebody said to me oh, you're 25 it's fantastic um a quarter of a century can you believe it that the whole concept of being 25 and it being a quarter of a century that that threw me to the threw me to the curb um so uh, never say that to anybody that that can be uh, fraught with danger but if you are approaching a milestone 40 onwards don't worry don't worry. Just, uh, you know, uh, as my mother used to say, if you worry, you die, so why worry? And it's quite right. Uh, don't take everything so seriously. Accept everything with a pinch of salt. And if it's important, somebody will put it in writing. Also, and this is another thing I do almost instinctively these days, there was a time when I used to take phone calls left, right and centre and be very, very concerned that I'd missed a phone call. Nowadays, if I miss a phone call, well, if it's important, somebody will leave a message. If it's not, well, they'll call back. It's that simple. You have to go in with that open mentality uh, to drive you on through the remaining twilight years. 
Um, but I dare say that uh, with a bit of luck, I'll still be doing this in 50 years' time. So uh, we'll regroup back then. Uh, next week, we will do uh, something uh, slightly different because we're going to take a look at the very first Disney superhero movie that may not have worked back then and really didn't know what it was going to be. I'm not too fussed about the plot. I'm not too fussed about anything of that nature, the story behind it, or the complexities that are the creation of what we now know and adore as Condor Man from 1981 with Michael Crawford uh, doing the, that American accent that he does. Um, but uh, I'm more excited about the action in the picture because there's a couple of great moments and uh, I really, really wanted to explore those, particularly after uh, many moons ago um, interviewing the stunt man, the stunt coordinator, Colin Skeeping, who's got a few bits and pieces of, uh, of information to partake, uh, which is rather lovely. So we'll have a look at that and uh, with a bit of luck, There'll be a few other bits along the way during the course of the week. So don't forget to uh, check back on all of the socials. There is a link tree link. I always get that wrong. Link tree link in the, gr in the thing below. Click the link tree link. It'll take you to the Twitters. It'll take you to Facebook. It'll take you to Instagram. And it'll take you to TikTok, which does need work. But it's coming along slowly but surely. If you are a TikToker, don't forget to follow me on there and uh, we'll try and get some content on there as well. So that's about the size of it for now. Do try and stay cool in the humidity, and uh, we will uh, catch you all again next week, shall we? Until then, it's bye for now. <laughs>